Hello everyone and welcome back to another GTA Online guide where today we're going to be discussing what the best fighter jet in GTA Online is after the recent release of the B11 Strike Force. I mentioned in my previous video that I'd be comparing the Strike Force with all the other jets in the game and now here we are. So where do we begin? What do we define as a better jet than one another? Well, in my opinion, if we assume every pilot has the same level of skill, I would consider a jet to be better than one another if it's A, able to fight other jets with the advantage in battle, and B, if its versatility allows it to do more than just taking out rival jets out of the sky. So the main jets that I would see people use either against me or anyone else would be the Hydra, the Laser, the Pyro, the Rogue, and very rarely the Molotov. All the other planes released as part of the base game or DLCs, I've never really seen them in game in action, besides the initial release Tuesday that they came. Mainly because they're kind of underpowered and they're pretty obsolete compared to the existing planes. Surprisingly, despite how good it is, I've never really seen anyone else using the Starling. I don't know why, because it's such a good jet, but I'll get more into that later in the video. If you want to share what planes you've personally seen in free mode, let me know in the comments. But for now, we're going to be talking about adding the Strike Force to the mix. We all know it's a pretty good jet despite the nerf minigun cannon, but in regards to everything else in the game, is it really that good? Well, yes and no is the short answer. Here's why it's good. For one, it's got really good weapons, it's got pretty much anything you can ask for. Homing rockets, barrage rockets, bombs, the whole shebang, baby. All of which can all be useful in a dogfight. Pair that with its reputable turning speed and slowed down cruising speed, this plane is exceedingly good at dogfighting most other planes. So there we have it folks, make sure to leave a like- Yeah, we're not done yet. I'm not gonna let you go that quickly. Because despite the upsides that the Strike Force has, there's always going to be the demon on the opposite shoulder. The main reason? The cannon. Its rate of fire is absolute trash. So slow in fact that it actually becomes a problem when you manage to outturn your opponent and try and aim your gun at them. Because on the most part, it's hoping to hell that by the time your crosshair lines up with the target, a shot comes out of the gun. If you do a swipe at the target with the crosshair and hold down the fire button, there's a very high chance that you'll end up missing your target despite having a clear shot simply because of a piss poor fire rate. This however is not a problem with many other planes, even the ones that don't feature explosive cannons. With the Hydra and the laser, if you manage to line up your sights with the target, you're getting a kill for sure. And even with planes with non-explosive cannons, their high rate of fire allows you to at least be able to cause significant damage to the opponent, which even if you don't blow them up right away, you've weakened their engines, damaged the armor, and lowered their health just a little bit. With the Strike Force, it's possible for you to line up numerous times and not be rewarded with a hit. This can somewhat be rectified with the use of the barrage missiles. It's kind of like clay pigeon shooting. If you aim ahead of the target and get the correct distance and fire off the barrage of rockets, you can very easily take down the target very quickly, especially if your opponent also happens to be using a Strike Force, because the Strike Force armor is so durable that if you manage to get a hit, on them using the cannon, yeah you might have disabled their plane but they can just hop out and survive the ordeal. With rockets there's much less chance of that tosser getting away. Besides that, if you can work with the weaknesses of the strike force then yeah you're gonna be one hell of a pilot to take down. Unless your opponent happens to be in one of these babies, the Starling. The Starling is a unique specimen, very unlike all other planes in the game, and it's because of this is why I think the Starling is by far the best jet for dogfighting in the game. No kidding, here's why. The Starling can do what other fighter planes can't, go really, really slow. Yeah, remember in my previous video I said that top speed doesn't always matter? Well, for the record, in a drag race, if the pilot wanted to, they could very easily just demolish the strike force in a drag race due to the booster. But again, that's only if the pilot wants to go fast. What the Starling does well is its ability to cruise at very slow speed. This makes it very difficult for someone who isn't using a Starling to turn and aim at you, if you happen to be in a dogfight. What the Starling can do is cruise at slow speed and fly in a circle firing endless homing missiles at the opponent when in a dogfight. This forces the opponent to keep having to use their countermeasures and keep turning to avoid the endless stream of missiles that are coming at them. They're going too fast to be able to turn tight enough to aim their guns at you 90% of the time. They can't go out wide either horizontally or vertically because they've got missiles coming after them and they can't really run away because the Starling can just chase them down. And I know the boost of the Starling is limited before recharge, but it's more than enough to do what the pilot needs it to do. 
So with all this in mind, the Starling pretty much has control over the battle most of the time. The opponent can attempt evasive manoeuvres to try and confuse the pilot of the Starling, which my opponent for this video was trying to do to me, but the amount of time it takes for the opponent to take advantage of my confusion of where they are, it just isn't long enough I can get turned around and start aiming at them again. However, what the Starling can do during a battle is every once in a while, while the Starling is chasing down the rival plane, they can use non-explosive machine guns to slowly chip away at the plane's health. It takes a while, a really long time in fact, but ultimately the Starling is going to win the battle eventually just through attrition alone. The only way to beat a Starling from what I've seen is charging at it head on from a distance, utilising the main gun of whatever you're flying to get a clear shot of the Starling before it can use its strategy of winning through attrition. If your only target is a Starling and you happen to be in a strike force, you can just ram them. The strike force is tough enough to survive the ordeal and be healthy enough to keep battling or just let you return to base. Now before people complain saying, well okay it's good at dogfights but what about doing other stuff other than dogfighting? like ground targets. Well, if you're not a fan of bombing, which is what the Starling can do well, I personally much prefer to just dive bomb vertically on top of people using non-homing missiles. Again, the Starling's low cruising speed makes this very easy to do. Just equip non-homing missiles, find a target, dive vertically downward so that they can't aim back at you with an explosive sniper or rocket launcher, and fire away, Sunny Jim! If you miss your target, just climb straight up and try again. The boost feature of the Starling makes it very easy to play safe and take no risks, especially if you have a bunch of people flying them alongside you. And that is why I think the Starling is the ultimate fighter plane in GTA Online. Do you guys agree with me? Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the Pyro Gaming channel for loads more videos coming to you very soon. See you around, folks.